Florian is going to talk to us today about using the Mordic API um, for CMS integration, actually a really, really deep integration that I happen to know. Um, normally when you and I talk frequently, I say I have no idea what you're talking about, <laughs> but in this case, I think I have a pretty good idea and I'm very much looking forward to it. Florian is a chief developer in uh, our Lightfire agency has been doing open source work for like, I don't know, over 10 years anyway, and uh, has lately been very involved with a modic open source project as well in on many levels. Anything else I should mention before we kick it off? No, 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 that's enough. I, I will introduce myself in the video, so. Okay, and um, talk to you soon in the Q&A. For everybody else, please make sure to uh, type all the questions in in the q and A, I'll, I'll add a button at the top of the stream if it's not there, and I'll, I'll show you the URL, and uh, we'll answer it all in the Q&A in a bit. For now, uh, let's get going. Welcome and good evening, everybody, to my last talk for today. And um, this one is about using the Mordic API, the CMS integration. But before we start, let's clear some things up. This talk will be divided into two parts, and the first one is m the more general one, so it should give you a brief overview about uh, what APIs are, and um, I want to show you how you can benefit from them, and uh, also provide you some examples how we integrate modic forms and yeah, assets into our CMS, or content management system, um, and um, yeah, how, how it uh, looks in the front end so that the website user or your website user will not recognize that he is um, interacting with Anmotic at this time. And um, the second part is the more nerdy one and that's why my twin is here <laughs> or sit sitting next to me. So, um, hello pony. <laughs> um, the second one is the more nerdy part and um, I will show you some code examples how we um, interact with the API and um, how we implement all the calls and what's under the hood. So, and before we come to the agenda, so I want to introduce myself. Um, hi, I'm Florian. I'm an um, open source web developer and coach and head of services at Leucht for Digital Marketing in Hanover in Germany. So, good evening from Hanover. Um, what I also am, I am a Type 3 expert, and that's why I'm showing you all the examples in a Type 3 CMS. But um, please keep in mind that Type 3 is only a placeholder. All the functions and um, yeah, the things that I show you can be implemented in other uh, in any other um, CMS as well, so in WordPress or in Drupal. And maybe there are also integrations out there that I don't know, but um, if there are not, it's very, very simple to inter to, to interact with the Modic API in uh, your CMS too. And last but not least, I'm a Modic enthusiast since 2018, so I came first in touch with Modic two years ago, um, started to developing some bundles for our company, so maybe you know the Authero uh, login for the Modic backend or um, when you come from Germany, we have a Deutsche Post plugin, so where you can send, or where you can send um, letters and postcards from your Mordic with a campaign action. Yeah, and then once again, let's take a look on the agenda for uh, agenda for today. So um, first, the first part is um, your yeah, API. What what is an API? Um, I want to give you brief overview b about what that is, and um, yeah why you should use that. Um, then I will give you some use cases and then we dive deeper into it and go over to the nerdy part. And I will show you how you can enable the mod the API on Modic side because you have to do some things in your Modic backend to uh, enable the API and benefit from that. And then I will show you how we connect uh, our application, so the CMS integration with the Modic API. So let's start with the API. Um, API, first of all, stands for Application Programming Interface. And you say, okay, 
that um, I will compare this with another interface you already know and that's the user interface and um, in general you can say the application programming interface so the API is the user interface for machines so when you click on a button um, you interact with a modic and the API will call an URL and modic provides some data so that's the same for machines what you did when you do on a when you click on a button so when you click on a button you will also call an URL or an action and uh, modic provides some data back and what is that is for you the so user interface is um, the a API for machines so the way to interact with modic so <laughs> that was already the first part or the first point of the agenda for today and let's take a look and go over to the use cases. Okay, so let's take a look at the asset that our first API we want to interact with and let's take a look on our website. Yeah, here we go. This is our demo website, so it is a type of 3 introduction package, nothing special, but um, I want to show you the asset and um, the asset is behind this link so when you take a look at the left bottom so we have here uh, modic.local slash s asset slash uh, single page lf product flyer pdf and this is a modic asset directly linked here in this type of 3 instance and let's take a look at the backend um, we can manage our, our all our assets here in the, the modic file storage and we see the single page LF product flyer here and we can edit some metadata here provide a title or a description and um, yeah, for type of 3 we can also assign some categories to it but um, let's see where we can place the product flyer so this is a content element here and we have the link here and when we take a look at the link we can select our asset in typo 3 so we have not, not to enter a manual link here we can say okay we want to link this file save and we are done so yeah that's it for the assets and now we go over to segments so what can we do with segments and we also take a look at our website or the backend and what you see now are um, the Modic segments, so the segments that are available in Modic on the right hand side. So we have the Interessent, uh, the Interessent Bestätigt and the Modic Modicon um, segment and we decided to um, allow to combine these segments. So in Type 3 we have so called Personas and a Persona can have multiple segments which are combined via an AND condition so um, the persona interest already matches when our modic contact has the segment interest and interest bestätigt so um, when he has both of this the interest sent and the interest bestätigt segment um, he will uh, get the persona interest in our type of 3 and when we take a look at our content element we just created the product brochure um, we want to say okay show this product brochure only when our website user is in the segment or uh, sorry is in the persona or has a persona interest so we can just assign it here and um, as I have already the segment persona we take a look here and I will reload this and uh, okay <laughs> okay so um, that was bullshit uh, I, I don't have the persona interest or uh, both of the segments so um, <laughs> let's let's uh, do try one 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 other thing so um, we say okay show if uh, no persona matches um, and then we should be good so just reload the site and ah here we go so uh, that's it 
the next ones are the form and the fields and i would say f uh, for, for for me that are the most powerful ones we would because um yeah <laughs> i will show you obviously so let's take a look and we're now looking on the form builder in type 3 and there is already a formula or a form i created in a session prior to this so it was only available in german language but um, let's take a look at these form here and we say we have the forename, the nachname and the email which is the first name, the last name and the email address of the user and we also said okay um, when someone submits this form um, there should be a new model contact created or uh, an existing one updated. It depends on whether the user have a cookie MTC ID or not. Uh, we also want to send it to a modic form set, uh, so that um, we can use this form within campaigns or in campaign actions and we want to show the user a confirmation message and also said here that this is of type campaign so in, in Mordic we have the possibilities to um, define or to create a standalone form and a campaign form and this one should be a campaign form and we take a look at the fields we have the possibility to um, create a mapping between these form fields and a modic property and we only have um, modic properties so uh, from from the contact properties available here for now so maybe we will add the company properties there as well but for now we have only the contact fields and as you see we map the for number to the contact field first name which m makes sense <laughs> and also we have the last name mapped uh, the nachname mapped to the last name and we can define our custom fields so when you create a modic a custom form field and we created one called modicon um, which is not available by default it will appear here too so uh, we can map all these fields or this data to our custom fields and we can also say okay this email field here is required and we add a validator and these are validators that are available by our CMS. So okay um, we, we define the forename and the nachname should not be required for now so let's okay or changes, added changes, maybe uh, just leave it mm, and I will uh, disable the one with the asset and enable the modicon form and when we now take a look at our front end reload the page we have the form here which fits very very good into our website so classes are the default bootstrap classes here and everything is styled uh, within the CMS so no JavaScript form from modic um, that is rendered here we can say okay uh, my name is Florian and uh, my last name is Vessels. it's okay I cannot write my own name and my email is f.vessels at leuchtfeuer.com and now I will submit this form we'll see the confirmation message hopefully yeah you have submitted this form in German language du hast das Formular abgeschickt and the other possibility we have here um, when we have already existing forms in Mordic we can link them here so we can just put in a new content element of type uh, Mordic form and we can also select the Mordicon form which now is retrieved, uh, retrieved from the Mordic backend so um, now we have the JavaScript stuff um, that is done by default so when you place a modic form there we have some more information here which are available uh, via our API so um, it's also of type campaign its title is modicon the ID in the modic is three we have four fields and uh, the form is not in kiosk, uh, kiosk mode so let's take a look on the website how this looks like okay and as you see here uh, this is, looks not that beautiful like the form in type 3 looks like so that's why an uh, editor sh should create the form in type 3 and it fits to your layout the most and this one looks not that good so there is more effort to do we have to style this and yeah more work more expensive okay and 
The last use case I want to show you is um, the contacts and the companies API so how we can benefit from them and uh, what we can do with that and uh, once again and for the last time let's take a look into our website or onto our website. And once again we take a look at our form builder and um, as I said here we have the finisher and the finisher creates a modic contact and that's where the um, contact API is called. So we say, okay, the for number is the first name of a modic contact. There are also other possibilities given um, and they are not implemented by us, but it's on our agenda. So we want to provide personalized content that um, maybe the, the first name will show up in, in a content element saying, hello, uh, Florian, uh, how are you doing today? Um, and by default, this this, um, mm, this information is only avi available when you're signed in into a designated secured area from maybe an in internal area where you have to sign in. And um, but but for us, when when our contact um, submitted this form and um, the data is mapped into this modic contact, we can retrieve this data by calling the API endpoint of the contacts, get this data and uh, place it in our content elements. And the good thing is uh, we can cache this content also because um, it's unique for the. ID of the cookie, uh, the MTC ID, and um, we can cache this content. Yeah, let's thumb this up. So um, we have the assets um, where you can integrate your assets uh, directly from the CMS so you don't have to go to the modic, upload your asset, and then um, place a link on the website. You can do that directly from your CMS backend and um, then we have the segments, so you can provide customized content for segments. Um, we um, combine the segments in so-called personas, and um, yeah, they are cacheable, and um, that's a big advantage. So it looks very, very smooth. Then the most powerful one for me, the forms and fields. You see, with the form builder there, we can build forms in our tapestry, so that our editor don't need to access the modic and um, learn how to create forms there. And he can do this in his type of through backend or CMS backend, which he knows like the back of his hand. And when you remember, just take a look at the front end, the forms looks very, very good. So it applies all the CSS that you have in your CMS and you will not see, or the website user will not see that it is not a form from your CMS, but a modic form. So very, very powerful, I would say. Yeah, and the last use case we took a look on was the contacts and the company. So where we can receive some data that is in the modic and um, show this data in our type of three or our content management system. And um, as I said before, there are even more endpoints available and so other possibilities that can be implemented, but uh, we do not implement it for this time. Maybe we, yeah, <laughs> maybe um, we will do that later on. So if you have a um, use case for that um, and you use a type of three, just call me. I can definitely do some stuff for you there. Yeah, and the full list is available at developer.modic.org. And yeah, that was the first part. And uh, now, as you see, uh, this is Joda, and I'm sitting in front of this cool wall here. Uh, let's start with the nerdy part. Let's take a look at the modic backend because before we want, uh, before we can uh, use the API, we have to enable that in our modic instance. So we have to take a look at the configuration module. And then the sele select the API settings on the left hand side and we want to enable this API. Okay, the other options are just fine by default and then we apply this. And now you have to make sure to clear the cache because um, I, I run into this problem very, very often that I enable the API and then try to establish a connection and I get a 403 so that I'm not authorized you have to clear the cache. When you did that, everything works fine when the credential matches. So um, 
Okay, next um, we have the API credentials settings here on the right hand side. And we already have our type of three connection, which is an OAuth one connection. So we have the public key and the secret key. And that's all on the modic side. So let's go back to our type of three. And in type of three, we have a dedicated modic module here. And as you see, we have um, the public key here and the secret key here, which we have from modic the public key and the secret key here. We have the URL from our modic, which is modic.local, and we retrieved uh, received um, an access token and an access token secret from modic. So um, that's data we get from modic. But let's delete this data and um, go to the whole process one more time. Yeah, here we are again. I cleared the access token and the access token secret, also the other credentials, and let's start over. So I copy the public key from Modic, put it here, the secret key, and paste it here. So that's for all. Let's save this configuration. Okay, now we got a button here authorized with Modic. I got to the Modic, and now I have to log in again. So uh, what what was my name? I guess it was user admin and the password very secure. Yeah, it's password. So I log in. Okay, then we have to. Oh no! Do not save my my secret password here. Um, we ha we have this information. The application type of three would like to connect to your account, and why type of three? Um, that was um, the name of the application we we uh, choose. When you remember the modic screen where we can um, find the credentials, we have the name type of three. Okay, let's accept this and. Now, hopefully, we get a message. Okay, your Modic API is now connected. You can close this window and reload your Type 3 backend. And as I said before, when you forgot to clear the cache, you will receive here in 403, which says, okay, are you not authorized to use this API? So keep in mind to clear your cache. And when we reload the module now, we see here, ah, yeah, we have a connection to Modic REST API and we can go on. Yeah, here we are. We're now taking a look into our PHP Storm and uh, code. And the first thing I want to show you is how we handle the text. So how we synchronize the text, how we get the text from Modic, how we can create new text in Type 3 and synchronize them with Modic text, and how we assign text to a user. So first thing for all API endpoint calls. So um, yeah, for every call we have a dedicated repository, and in this case we have uh, quite obviously the tech repository, which uses a text API from Modic. And all the APIs from Modic are available in a Modic API library, which you can uh, require via Composer, for example. And here we look at the method that is. Um, responsible for synchronizing the text and first we get all available text and we we'll take a look into this message we see okay we're now looking here into our cms database uh, the table is tx modic domain model tag and we iterate to that and get everything which is available there after that we delete all text and we uh, do a soft delete so we say okay the deleted flag is now set to true and we execute the query builder. So keep in mind all texts are still available in the type of 3 database but have the flag deleted set to true. And after that we get all texts from Mautic by calling the text API and the method getList and we search for an empty string. We start by zero and get up to 999 texts and return this as an array. Mm, after that we get the time so we can put a timestamp into it and then we to iterate through the text and take a look whether the ID already exists in our database and remember there are all texts available but the deleted flag is set to true and we say update. We go here and see okay we set deleted to zero um, the title is the property tag of our tag returned by modic timestamp so the type of three call a t stamp is the actual time and when 
there is no tag, so it is a new tag. Uh, we insert a new one here and just create one. We set a UID which matches the ID of the ID, the tag in Mordic. The creation date is the timestamp, the t-stamp is uh, also the time, the actual time, the title is a tag, and uh, we also set the deleted flag to zero, and that's all. That's how we synchronize the tags. And then let's take a look at um, the form stuff, so how we handle all the forms and the contact fields and so on. And um, yeah, we also have a hook here, and this hook is called by the Typus form extension, so in the Typus backend, nothing to do with Modic on this time, at this time. And we have several methods here that are called dynamically used. So before form save, this is the method that is called before we save the form. So when we click the save button, um, this one is called. And um, yeah, we get the form definition, and the form definition in Typus 3 is an array, and as you can imagine, this array does not fit or d does not match the structure that is expected by the Modic API. So we have to transform this and this is here, yeah, this is quite a really, really nerdy part. Uh, we, we write some transformers and for every field and for every form type. So we have a first of all a form transformation which f um, transforms the form into uh, the type of three form into um, an Modic form and um, this class is responsible for that. Here is an example how Modic needs the data and yeah <laughs> you see okay form type is campaign here and as we have a form a standalone form here it's standard form alone form and uh, we have the abstract form transformation uh, and here is all the stuff into in, in it so when we do a transform we get the type of three form definition and the alias is um, the identifier the form type is the form type so remember when a campaign form is um, when when you create a campaign form it is campaign otherwise it's standalone back here so it's published uh, yes it is because all the forms you have in type 3 are published by default so we set it here to true then the name is the label in the form definition and uh, the post action yes it's a return of course so and that's it for the form transformation. So there is more stuff on more things happening here, but um, I will, will not go any deeper to that. So let's take a look, look back to our form hook and after we have um, the form and transformed the structure from type 3 to Modic for the form, we have that for all the fields. And when you take a look to the left here, we have for every type of type of three form and form transformations. Yeah, where's the text area? No, the text transformation is for our first name and our last name. So let's take a look at this one. This one is very, very simple, I guess. Yes, it is. As you see here, we have a type text and um, then this transformation extends the abstract form field transformation. We'll take a look at this in a moment. But um, as you see here, also we have the um, JSON array or the, the, the JSON that Mordek expects so we can just take a look how, how it should be and this is for us as a reference so when we have to um, do some stuff here or provide new features uh, we can take a look what Mordek expects and don't figure this out every time so okay the text transformation is very very simple um, and I think the email transformation is it as well uh, yeah, the ignore transformation, okay. <laughs> we have a transformation to this ignored. So, uh, for example, in Type 3, we can um, put some containers in and say, okay, we have a two column element here, and um, Modic don't know this. So, we will not transform this element and will not put it to Modic. So, we say, okay, we skip transformation of what we have here. No information synced with Modic. Multi checkbox, I guess. Yes, uh, it extends the list transformation prototype. We have a prototype here, and we'll take a look at it in a moment. So we have a type checkbox group. That's the type Modic expect. Then the list identifier is option list. That's also something Modic expect. Custom fields properties is true. And when we take a look at the list transformation, 
yes here we have some defaults and then we also have the transform which is um, the parent transform and this prototype extends the abstract form field transformation I did some stuff here so um, nothing special so fancy stuff okay that's it for here and finally the abstract form field transformation and this is where all this stuff happens so when we have no type we'll um, throw a transformation exception and then the field data and you remember the form data uh, in the form transformation we have the field data here yeah then here again we check if um, the field definition already has a modic id so when it has we have to update this property otherwise we have to create a new one and um, yeah we, we assign the data when it has uh, the id when it has one otherwise we will let it empty so modic knows um, this is a new form field and um, yes or it has to create a new form field otherwise modic knows when we um, provide an id that it has to update an existing form field and one more thing here when you're interested in more code and want to get inspired by how we solve uh, problems you can find the whole code and the modic organization on github and the repository is modic type of three so just take a look here um, and uh, everything i showed before you will find here and if you want to create your own integration and need some help just ask me I, I will help you or when you have other use cases or said okay uh, here there's something missing um, yeah just come to me and uh, I will do my best to support you that's it for today so if you have any questions I'm happy to answer them in the following up uh, Q&A session or if you have any hints or you want to discuss some things um, let's get in touch and if you have any questions after that you can find me on LinkedIn or on Twitter or on Slack in Mordic and in Type 3 so just look for Flossels and you will find me and last but not least there is also an email address that belongs to me so there is f.vessels at leuchtfeuer.com yeah that's it once again so Thank you very much for listening and taking part at this session and now let's discuss some things. Yay! Thank you so much, Florian. That was uh, really in-depth. I'm not sure what was um, crazier, um, the, the second part for the non-developers or the first part for the non-Germans. <laughs> <laughs> I, but, I, I try uh, yeah. I try to translate anything everything yeah we there was a lot to learn for everybody let's put it that way <laughs> okay um yeah th there are some questions in the in the chat or in in the q a slide if you uh, listeners have more more questions feel free to add them now I would start with a non-developer question that came in from Arthur and that's a uh, can you add a campaign from a, a com campaign form to an existing campaign from within type of three and thanks for a nice session um can okay uh, in form from an, to an existing campaign from within type of three okay um no it's not um, possible to um, update create uh, existing modic forms so um, you have to create new forms in your type of three backend um, and this forms can be updated from type of three of course but um, it does not apply to existing one because there is some mapping missing um, but i guess it's a good feature that um, i would call it an importer for mortic forms into type of three and so um, yeah possible in general, but just not there that's that's a feature okay um yeah so more generally speaking there was a lot of type of three involved and you mentioned it time and again but but uh, of what you showed and what you learned how much of that is really specific to type of three cms and and how much of it would be more or less the same in other systems such as joomla or whatever um that's also good questions and i would say mm -hmm. it's um 50 50. um so um 
when when we designed this API or this our type of three extension, um, we we spent a lot of thoughts on that and um, designed a layer which um, translates and that's what I showed uh, at last. Um, that's the form transformation classes and um, that transforms data from anything to the data format Mordek expects. And um, this transformation you can use in every uh, CMS, I would say. But of course, there are um, type of three specific code styles and um, the files are laying in a yeah. specific directory and this yeah. um, has to be changed for yeah. any other um, CMS. Okay. Yeah. So next step, so it's 50, 50. to the type of three API, which is which is a very sophisticated open source API. Does the Mordic API fulfill the same amount of features and stability, or is it missing something in your opinion? That's from Kevin. Okay, um, tough question. Um, the Mordic API is hard. Um, there, there are uh, good endpoints, and um, as you can find on uh, developer.mordic.org, um, I guess for every um, default, data record, there is an API available. But the tough part is the OAuth part, because um, we struggled with it sometimes, or uh, I, I would not say any time, but um, yeah, the, the requests are signed, or the secret is malformed. And um, the bundle which um, handles this, it's it's uh, from Will Durant, I, I, yeah, from, from Will Durant. And, um, it's very old, so there, there we must um, spend a lot of uh, hours uh, on that to make it more stable and bulletproof. And uh, oh, fun fact: when I enlarge you, the multi knot is, is actually a deep sea diver. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Okay. In, in uh, w when we show the slides, uh, Mordic sits on our uh, bottom bar, so that's uh, the, the also very cool. <laughs> Oh, whatever. Okay. Um, next up, does the API library also exist in other programming languages, e.g. Python? Oh, um, uh, not not that I know. So it's only a PHP library for now. But um, yeah, it, yeah it's only a PHP. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, and uh, did you tackle the, the switch to Mordic 3 already? Or do, or do you have any insights about the changes in API? Yeah, um, when, when I recorded uh, the session, that was uh, two weeks ago, and um, the Mordic API library in version 3 was released five days prior to this talk. So um, I had not much time to, uh, to, to um, investigate that. And um, I can say, uh, I hope that it works out of the box, but it didn't. Um, so that that's the next thing on my personal agenda that I have to tackle. But there is a, now an API library for Mordic 3, so um, it's it's not that many to do. Yeah, I think API is going to be much, much more important going forward. It is important already, but it's only going to be more important, right? Uh, little feedback from Kevin here. Thanks a lot for your insights. Yeah, you're welcome, uh, Kevin. Kevin. Longer question, let me read it to you. I have also tried to work with the API, but I'm all, always having problems to figure out what data has to be transferred when, where, and how. Do you have a hint for me? Yeah, I, I, I can understand that because um, uh, that was me when I started to, to work on um, this uh, type of three. API package, um, it's very, very hard. So there is a um, documentation, as I already mentioned, and um, there are also some examples, but um, not all of these examples work. And um, OK, my fault. I, I, I should have uh, updated this documentation or put a hint on that, but um, I had no time. And uh, as I said in the Composer talk, I guess uh, documentation is, is definitely not for me. Um, so that's why uh, I decided to put the um, JSON stru structure that Mordic expects and that Mordic um, gives back to our application in the PHP documents, as I showed in the nerdy part. Which is cool. Uh, and where can I find an example of the OAuth connection? Yeah, um, there is for, for the OAuth one, there is um, an example in the repository I, I showed at the end of um, my, my pre-recorded session. So there you can definitely find um, some things or uh, some code example. Pardon? 
Yeah, or... but, but, but that's, that's uh, nothing to do with Type 3. That's, um, uh, that's the, the 50 person that is, is not Type 3. <laughs> okay, but it's that repo that you're referring to. Uh, yeah, 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 absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then if no other questions coming in here, I think we can let you go and let you call it a day. Thank you very much for your yeah. many talks today. Grab a beer finally, or two. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, we're, we're sitting here in Europe. It's dark outside, as you mentioned. Others are still in the sun. Um, so. But, but it, it's never too early for beer or too late. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Let's not go any further. I let you go. Thank you so much. Uh, take care and see you soon. Yeah, see you. Bye-bye.